to be services led, you need a platform that allows you to lead with services. And the user services platform, USP, well, this week, the last couple of days, we're having a summit on that. Svi, why don't you kind of give us a highlight of the tutorial that you, uh, you gave this morning to talking about the transition to a USP? It was a, a great session, and we had a wonderful audience as well here in Germany uh, discussing about USP and the transition uh, from TL69 to the next generation a device management protocol USP or TR369. Uh, we covered the challenges, we covered the new enhancements that USP is bringing and the uh, value added services that you can onboard with the help of USP. And it was a great session, I think. Uh, we had a, a wonderful time, you know. I think that the audience also enjoyed the session and uh, we had a lot of questions coming. So it was a very, very productive session, I would say, you know, for me personally and also for, for all the participants. So what was one of your takeaways from uh, the session so far? There were a lot of questions coming from the audience and uh, we see that there is a big transition coming today and the uh, network operators are actually evolving and they're moving from the era of speed to the new era of quality of experience. And USP is actually coming very handy when we are talking about measuring and collecting information from devices, getting this full quality of experience, uh, even within your in-home Wi-Fi connectivity as well. And also as a bridge to the new enhancements and uh, the ability to onboard new value-added services, which is very, very interesting. Uh, service providers are actually, and network operators are actually looking to expand the services that they're offering to their customers, right? So among those value-added services, we can see IoT, we can see parental control, we uh, see quality of experience, enhanced Wi-Fi applications, and a lot more, you know, like working from home and, and so on. Uh, USB actually acts as a bridge to gap between those value added services and onboard them onto the residential gateways. And in this way, you're actually utilizing your existing router and introducing new services. So we covered the main functionalities of USB, mm -hmm. how USB is actually um, giving a solution for TR69 restrictions that we had you know, with TR69 definition and architecture. Uh, We've introduced, uh, we've seen that USP can offer a great variety of different controllers and applications that you can run and utilize and provide those additional value-added services, uh, which is a big enhancement for the service providers and also for uh, various uh, ISPs as well. And so from an operator's perspective, uh, let's talk about the transition yeah. from TR69 to uh, USP. So, that's a great question because we see and from our experience with customers that they are right now uh, within this transition period for USP, what is most important for the customer is to maintain the network visibility and the control over the USP devices and the traditional TL69 because TL69 is not going to disappear. Mm -hmm. This is a transition period, and you need to maintain a transition procedure. You need to have a guided procedure to overcome if you have any obstacles or if you need to maintain a, a good program for onboarding and adding additional USB devices. So what's most important for, a, for the customers is actually a, to maintain provisioning, to maintain the, the management capability, to continue in collecting information and data from those devices. With the enhancements that it brings, it has also a learning curve, right? It's a new standard. Every new standard requires a, the service provider to engage more 
he needs his technical staff to understand and to deep dive into USB and the new functionalities. There are some changes with the USB data model, with how USB operates uh, when we're comparing this to TR69. There, we've introduced uh, a bunch of commands, events. So uh, these are, I would say, uh, some of the challenges that we have within the transition procedure when we're going from TL69 to USB. What about a greenfield operator? Could they just go with USB from the beginning? Well, that's a great question. And uh, I would say that for a greenfield operator, um, the main obstacle as if today is the ability to have uh, devices, right? So the maturity of devices is coming. We see device manufacturers also in the summit. We met some of them that are already uh, providing USB devices. Uh, but we know that service providers are looking uh, for a variety of different devices that they can choose from. So at this point, I see that the main I would say it's not an obstacle, but what prevents them to fully engage into a USB network is the lack of supporting devices that we see that are emerging and are coming into the market, and we saw this. And so I believe in a very short period of time, we'll have a, a very big variety to choose of different devices supporting and fully operational within USB. Now, what about the uh, app providers themselves? Are you starting to see an ecosystem develop? That's very interesting, and this is one of the discussions that we had also on our roundtable about these value-added services and the use of USB, which means that with USB, you can act as a bridge for additional services like Matter, maybe Zigbee, or other uh, devices that will be connected within your home. But you still need to have a very strong solution that you can also maintain and operate those devices. Because um, if you will not have any proxy like a USB agent within the router, it is pure over-the-top service. And when we're talking about over-the-top services, then the service provider has no capability of controlling, maintaining, troubleshooting, and the next time that the subscriber will have a problem with his device, with his metal device, who should he call to? You know, that's the major question. Is he calling um, Google where he purchased the device or he's calling his service provider? So we believe that he will be addressing this matter to his service provider. And in this case, USB comes in handy because USB can actually act as a bridge for those metal devices to the carrier network, okay? So we can have this device proxied through the, the USB agent, and then we can have a full feasibility and visibility into the, the home network itself. And that's a major, I would say, a, or a crucial point within adopting USB as an IoT bridge for additional value-added services. That makes sense. Seems like it's a huge marketing advantage for the service provider because they do have that reach into the home that an over-the-top provider wouldn't necessarily. Yes, definitely. And when they're looking into additional revenue streams, right, because they're looking to integrate additional services, uh, then the notion of software management on top of these residential gateways using USB capabilities is actually comes in handy. This is where we find that uh, the USB solution that the Broadband Forum is offering as a standard will unify the way that we are deploying additional services on top of these routers, the same that we are doing today with the App Enablement uh, Service Gateway, for an example, to standardize and to have a unified architecture for different devices that could onboard different applications. And this would be the way that these service providers will be able to offer this and market this to their end customers. A nice trusted application. And, and where does friendly technologies fit into all this? We've been around for over 20 years and uh, we were working very closely with our customers from the early days of TL69. We've been a member of the Broadband Forum from 2006. So 
quite a long time. Um, we are building device management platform. This is what we are doing for TR69 and USB and also for the IoT domain as well. So friendly technology has invested greatly uh, during the last few years within USB um, adding USB capabilities as a unified device management platform for the ability to have a seamless transition, which means, and this is something that we've also shown during the, the USB summit, how a device which is currently connected with TL69, a CPE, you can just send a firmware to the device, ask the device to reconnect with a new, let's say, USB agent, and you have all of your data is being pushed to the device, the device is registered seamlessly without any effort from the uh, service provider side for integrating this. 2006, that's 18 years uh, run. Uh, what value do you uh, get for being part of uh, this great association? Well, you know, um, except from the people, the <laughs> wonderful people of the Broadband Forum, uh, which is also a value for itself, but um, we believe strongly in open standards. This is the way that, uh, and we see this when uh, we are approaching potential customers, existing customers, and we see that open standards are making uh, our lives and our uh, customers' lives even easier when they're coming for integrating or adding new devices, new services. So as long as we're all having a unified language like the Broadman Forum is offering and has done with TR69, now we have shifted to the next generation of USB, this will make uh, the adoption of new services and uh, new revenue streams for the service providers a much more easier path for them to go. And that makes sense. And from a, a personal basis, you invest time coming to these meetings and, and, and working with uh, the engineers and so forth. You know, what has that meant for you personally? I really enjoy coming to these sessions uh, because, you know, we had a wonderful roundtable discussion about different use cases and how matter will eventually affect our lives, right? And we had some disagreement as well, you know, um, but these are the points that make you invent or reinvent things. And as my role as a product, as VP product at Friendly Technologies, uh, this is my main goal. I want to develop better products for my customers. This is my main goal. So professionally, I believe and I see that these meetings are very, very helpful for us and for me as well to develop and to have better products that Friendly can offer to our, to our customers. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank great. you. Thanks.